Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 10, Lesson 7, Factoring Special Products. After this lesson, you need to be able to factor binomials that are differences of squares, and factor trinomials that are perfect squares. Let's learn. Factoring differences of squares. The product of the sum and difference of two quantities resulted in a difference of squares. We learned about this in Lesson 4. So, the factored form of a difference of squares is the product of the sum and the difference of two quantities. Our key concept here is factoring our differences of squares, our problem is going to look like this, something to the second power minus something to the second power. And our final factored form is going to be the two things added together and the two things subtracted. So for example, if we had x squared minus 9, our final factored form would just be x plus 3 and x minus 3. The same thing is in both, 1's plus, 1's minus. If I had 4u squared minus 1, I would just end up really taking the square root of both and putting them in their correct spots. Example 1, factor differences of squares. Factor each polynomial. In A, I have 81v squared minus 64w squared. So I can see right now, it's in the format a squared minus b squared. So I'm just going to really take the square root to figure out what value was squared. So the square root of 81 is 9, and then v squared must have been v. Same for the 64 and the w. 64 square root is 8, w squared must be w. So my two factors must have been 9v and 8w. Now I'm going to write it as a difference of squares, taking those two things. So 1 must be positive, 1 must be negative. So 9v plus 8w and 9v minus 8w. In B, we have 1 minus 144 cubed squared, so we're going to do the same thing. Take the square root, take the square root. The square root of 1 is just 1. The square root of 144 is 12, and the square root of q squared would be q. So my final factored form would be 1 plus 12q and 1 minus 12q. Check your understanding. Factor each polynomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First one, we have 5x plus 8y and 5x minus 8y. And the second one, 14 minus g squared, 14 plus g squared. Again, it doesn't matter which one is where, as long as you have the correct two binomials. In the first one, square root of these, square root of 25 is 5 with an x, square root of 64 with a y is 8. Square root of 196 is 14. g to the fourth would be g squared times g squared. So that's where this comes from. Example two, factor more than once. Factor x to the fourth minus 256. So if we're going what we're doing, taking the square root of both, this is really x squared times x squared. So that would be x squared squared. And then the square root of 256 is 16. So I end up with x squared plus 16 and x squared minus 16. Well, this second part here is also another difference of squares. We have the first value squared and 16 is a perfect square. So that's really saying x squared minus 4 squared. So we could split that apart again into x plus 4 and x minus 4. So sometimes, especially fourth power ones, sometimes maybe sixth power ones, usually four, or you might have to factor more than once. Check your understanding. Factor each polynomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So in the first one, originally after you factor the first time, you're going to end up with 9n squared plus 1. And then over here, these two things would be 9n squared minus 1. This part right here is still a perfect square. So it would become 3n squared plus 1 and 3n squared minus 1. Same thing for the second part. We end up with 4x to the 4th plus y squared, and then this side we end up with 4x to the 4th minus y squared, and we end up with another difference of squares here, so 2x squared plus y, 2x squared minus y. This one looks like it could possibly have been another one, but there's not a square here, so we're done. If we had started with a y to the 8, then this second one here might have been able to keep going. It could get real complicated depending on the numbers that we're using. Example 3. Use factors to find area. Our real context here, area. Rosita's family is buying carpet for their living room, which is 6 meters wide and 6 meters long. They plan to carpet the whole area, except for a square near the door, which will be tiled. Find the factors representing the area of the living room that will be carpeted. So we can see here all this blue area will be carpeted, except for a little x by x square that will not be. So the whole area would be 6 by 6, or 36. The area of our tile is x times x, so x squared. Meaning, if we want to find the area of the carpet, then we would take that whole square and subtract the tile. So 36 minus x squared, this is a difference of squares. So we have 6 squared minus x squared. Our factored form would be 6 plus x and then 6 minus x. Those are the factors of the carpeted area. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and choose the best answer. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said B. If we're doing this, we end up with 
the first time through, x squared minus 4, and x squared plus 4. And then this first part is still a difference of squared, so x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then this part would stay, so I'd have x plus 2, x minus 2, and x squared plus 4, which is b. Let's learn factoring perfect squares. Squares of binomials, such as a plus b squared and a minus b squared, have special products called perfect square trinomials. For a trinomial to be factored as a perfect square, then the following things must be true. The first term must be a perfect square, so we must have a squared. The last term is a perfect square, so b squared. And then the middle term is two times the product of the square roots of the first and last terms. That sounds like a lot, but it's actually pretty easy to figure out. So our key concept here, factoring perfect square trinomials. If we see a squared and b squared at the beginning of the end and twice in the middle, then we can end up with a plus b squared or a minus b squared. So in our examples, 4x squared, that's a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. Here my square root would be 2x. Here my square root would be 7. 2 times 7 is 14. Doubled would be 28 with the x. We're good. They follow the rules that were listed above. And we'll practice doing these in the next example. Example 4. Identify a perfect square trinomial. Determine whether 4j squared plus 8j plus 16 is a perfect square trinomial. If so, factor it. So our check is the first term a perfect square. So 4, is that a perfect square? Yes. J squared, perfect square? Yes. So both of those are perfect squares. We're good. I'm going to skip down to the last one. Is the last one a perfect square? Yes. 16 is 4 times 4. So in the middle is 8j equal to 2j times 4 doubled. No. 8j is equal to 2j times 4, but it's not doubled. If this was a perfect square, this would now be 16j. But it's not, so it is not a perfect square trinomial. Example 5. Recognize and factor a perfect square trinomial. Determine whether 36h squared minus 12h plus 1 is a perfect square trinomial. If so, factor it. So let's check to see if this is even a perfect square. So is 36h squared a perfect square? Yes. 36 is a perfect square, and h to the second power is h times h. Let's skip down to the last. Is 1 a perfect square? Yep, 1 times 1. All right, in the middle, is 12h equal to 2 times 6h times 1? Yes. Even if it's negative, here we could have just did negative 1 times negative 1. So it works. So this trinomial is a perfect square trinomial. It satisfied all of our conditions. So let's factor it. It would be 6h minus 1 squared. We just took the square root of the first part and the square root of the last part. And because this sign was negative, we made our sign down here negative. So 6h minus 1 squared. Check your understanding. Determine if these trinomials are perfect square trinomials. If they are, factor it. If not, write not a perfect square trinomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So the first one is yes, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. The square root would be 5. The square root would be 6x. Multiplied, you'd get 30. 60 is doubled. So that one is 6x minus 5 squared. Here we'd have 6x and 5. Notice it's the same numbers. But this middle part is not doubled. It is not a perfect square trinomial. The last part, still 6x, still 5. Is it doubled? Yes. So all of these were pretty much the same. One's the positive version, one's the negative version. The middle one did not have a doubled b term, so it is not a perfect square trinomial.